everyone, welcome back to The Mom's View. I am Kaylee, this is Colette, Carly, and a very special guest, my cousin Jessie's back. She's actually been on before, but it was when we were in California mm -hmm. and filming at Maker Studios, so we're really happy to have her back on. And I was sad too because I wasn't on that episode. I don't remember where you were. That's right. Well, at home or something. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know where I was. Something. It was a long time ago. I was pregnant with Winston. Three years ago, I think. Oh my gosh. Four. Really? Winston's almost four. Oh my gosh. Nearly four. Doesn't seem that long ago. Isn't that so crazy? You were pregnant with Winston. Mm -hmm. So it's about time we get you back on. So if you don't know or you didn't see Jessie last time, she loves oils. I love oils. <laughs> she is like, oily. Just like she, she's very oily. She, does, oily. <laughs> she loves doTERRA oils and she kind of got like me into them. Colette uses them a lot. Carly loves them. So it's been a trickle effect. I feel yeah. like we'll text back and forth and it like goes up the chain of command. I'll ask Colette. Colette will ask Kaylee. Kaylee will ask Jesse. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she knows all. Yeah. Jesse is very, very smart. I don't know. No, you I know a lot. Head. We'll say a lot. Jesse also has a YouTube channel and it's been a little while, but she's back been. at it. It's the From Farm. Yeah. And I'm so excited. Colette and I were just talking like, we need a place to go where we can get all of the information, just like yeah. how to help your child if they have an earache, how to help like, you know, there are so many things that these oils do and mm -hmm. it's natural and it's wonderful and you should tell us more. I feel like I'm blabbering. <laughs> They are, and I think a lot of people have these oils that have just been passed on, kind of like these ladies, like they listen to me and they're like, yes, I love these, and then they have them sitting on their shelf forever and they're like, I don't know how to use them. Yeah. So on my channel, I'm gonna try to just show, show daily tips and how I use them with my kids and my husband and me, my friends, the tips that people call me for each and every day, and then I try to do a video on them um, and try to help people out that way. That's, That's, awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. That's so helpful. It is really helpful. And um, the thing that I love most about Jessie is that she loves to help people and she's always thinking about other people. And she is going to be talking to us about postpartum depression today. Sure, we'll all cry. Mm -hmm. You know, if. if Where's you have the tissue? I, know. <laughs> if, I have big sleeves on you. So okay, I'll just go. <laughs> if this isn't something that you've experienced yourself or any type of depression, I'm sure that you know someone who has. And Jessie came back and she made a video sharing her experience, which I think is so beautiful and so amazing that you put yourself out there and you were vulnerable and opened up because I think so many people feel alone yeah. Yeah. when it comes to stuff like that. It's not talked about enough. There's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of, but it's something that I think we keep private because we're like, no, like, I just had a baby, this wonderful moment, this beautiful part of my life, and why am I and feeling like this? And then we like, like guilt this? ourselves, like, why we am bad. I feeling bad? Like, how can I yeah. feel bad when I have this beautiful baby that so many people desire, and I'm able, for me personally, to have babies so easily, and when this happened, I just thought, what, how could I be ungrateful? How can I do that? But it's such a taboo subject, and that's the thing, that's the reason I was gone for so long for my channel. I couldn't do one more thing. Um, I went through it, and I didn't even go through it till my fourth baby. Um, a lot of people think it's just brand new moms, but when I say new moms, it could be your sixth kid. It doesn't have to be the first one. But I think even if you haven't went through it, even if you were of the age of not having ch children yet, or you've had them already and you're not gonna have any more, I think it's good to be aware of the signs, ways we can prevent it, and ways we can um, help it once it's happened, um, because there's always a woman around you, always. And you need to be able to be aware of that and to be really um, conscious of what they're going through because that's the only way they're going to get help. So many of us were in such a dark hole when it happens that there's no way to climb out by yourself. Yeah. I was really lucky to survive it. And I, I don't want to min minimize the word survive because, <sighs> sorry, I, from growing up till now, I've had a coddled life. Me and Kaylee live, we're next door neighbors. We were best friends and we still are. Um, I had wonderful parents, grew up middle class, um, had everything I needed. There's not one thing I didn't have in my life that I needed and so many things that I just wanted. Um, wonderful parents, they are married my whole life. Wonderful, loving people. I had a wonderful, amazing family. I was the bottom of six children. Um, I was spoiled rotten. Um, like I said, me and Kaylee are best friends, she grew up like through the field from me, we spent every waking minute together that we could. Um, I had everything I needed and 
I went through college. I haven't really had a whole lot of things happen to me that were really extremely depressing at all. And so this was my first thing that I really had to go through. And I, I felt bad because I knew other people have went through such worse things. There's so many different things that people have went through that I haven't had to go through that. And when this hit me, I was embarrassed. I was prideful. I'm always the person, as far as like your group of friends, mostly that everyone calls for help. And I didn't know how to call them for help. And it was so hard other than, luckily I have an amazing husband, amazing kids, um, amazing family support, but I didn't even truly let them in. And that's why I wanna come and I wanna be an advocate for women because I want it to not be a taboo subject. I want it to be something that everyone's so aware of that I want them to be there for everyone. And I want them to, to be able to help everyone around them. And there's ways that I helped myself. Luckily, I wasn't so deep into it. I mean, I was deep, but I could have been deeper. And I didn't hit complete rock bottom, but I was pretty deep. And I remember a time that, I don't know if you guys, you guys didn't know at the time. Do you remember the time that you and Kaylee came to my house? Yes. And I was so bad that day. I, I wanted so bad to tell you guys to stay. But I knew you guys were hurrying to Salt Lake to help some other woman that probably needed it way worse than me, but I was suffocating. And I don't want anyone to feel that way. I know they're going to feel that way, but I want them to know that they can reach out and say, I need help. And there's going to be a way to do that. And there's certain things that I did to help myself and I was able to float through it. And it not only lasted, it lasted for probably a good at least 15 months before I could see the light of day. And there's so many women that go deeper than me and there's so many different levels of it. I mean, it starts with the baby blues. Um, I think that's what a lot of people misconceive about it. They think, oh, is she just going through baby blues? Which that's classified as of all the research that I've done. It's basically the first weeks after the baby's born. And um, when your hormones are just going up and down and your sleep deprivation and you kind of peek out of that after the first few weeks. Well, mine didn't start until um, maybe it was nine weeks. So um, my last baby, Sunny, she was my third pregnancy, my fourth baby. We had twins, my second pregnancy. Um, after them, I had severe chest pain that was unexplained. Um, now looking back, I am, I am pretty positive I had severe anxiety, but I didn't know because we had a two-year-old. He was 24 months, and then I had newborn twins, and my life was a whirlwind. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm, like I said earlier, I'm pretty prideful. And so I wouldn't even ask for help. I had, I never had one night when anyone come over. I did it myself. I had my support of my husband and support of my family if I needed it. But um, I was pretty pr prideful. And so I started getting really severe chest pain. We went through every heart test possible and never found anything. Did a doctor ever like mention like, I are think you feeling? My cardiologist did say, are you having anxiety? And I had never had it before, so I didn't know how to recognize it. Right. Yeah. But now looking back, yes, mm -hmm. I was having it. And it was when everything would calm down, the, the storm would calm, kids were asleep. And then all of a sudden I would just, <gasps> like it would hurt. Anyways, I kind of got through that. Everything was okay. Um, and then when I decided to get pregnant with Sunny, I wanted to do everything so naturally and so good that I went off everything except natural supplements, no chemicals into my body, except the daily things, you know, like I'm not saying I was completely clean, but um, I was really super sick with her, but about four and a half months, I was able to get back to the gym. My running, I ran until I was almost eight months along. Everything went great. Um, and then I had her. I had a natural childbirth. Everything went great. Um, a great recovery. Was she your first natural? Yeah, I went almost natural with the twins, but oh at the gosh. very end, they talked me into getting it and I let them. I, I was kind of upset, but you have to have multiples in the OR. Yeah. And so I thought, you know what? I don't want to be so headstrong and then something happened. Right. And those seconds of having to yeah. get the epidural or anesthesia, I don't want anything to go wrong and have to well, when have like something happen to the boys. medical staff is advising something, it's hard not to be like, It is hard, I? even when it's in my head. Yeah. And anyways, but so yeah, I... But Sunny's um, birth was great. Um, my recovery was great. At six weeks, I went and got an IUD because we we're so fertile. 
that I was so afraid of having two in a year because I did three in two years and that wasn't fun. But um, anyways, I went and got my IUD at six months and, or six weeks and this is kind of a lot of information, but um, I started bleeding, which I hadn't done after having the baby, like, because my recovery was so great. I would snap right back and I kept putting it off to call my doctor. And I think being in the healthcare field, nurses are far better nurses than patients. Yeah. They always think that they can just take care of themselves. I didn't really want to tell anyone. And I also was kind of bugged that I was bleeding. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but um, so it went good. on for 16 days. I counted every day. And I decided that finally on the 16th day I was going to call my doctor. Well, it stopped. So I was like, yes. Uh, I don't have to call him. I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> well, um, fast forward to a couple days after it stopped. Um, and this is important. We'll come back to this. I was sitting there nursing my baby about six in the morning. My little boy came upstairs. He just woke up early and was sitting there talking to me. And he was whispering, being so sweet and so cute. And all of a sudden the hair stood up on my neck, my heart started racing. And I was just like, he, there was no reason for it. Anyways, long story, I ended up having a huge anxiety attack, but it was completely unwarranted. Right. And so I didn't understand it. I got through it, got the kids to school. And about four days later, my breast milk was gone, completely gone. Oh my gosh. And I hadn't had one in between that period. Anyways, that was the start of it. And I think what had happened with me bleeding and me not getting any help with it, my iron had completely plummeted. And my vitamin D was really, really super low. Um, so many different factors. I think if I would have gotten help, I could have maybe prevented it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me blaming myself. I don't know. But um, it started these anxi anxiety attacks. And some days weren't just full-blown attacks. Some days were just mainstream, just constant anxiety, just this terrible feeling constantly. Um, I think when people think about anxiety as well, they think of just like stressed, just stressed and like there's so much stuff to do. I could be sitting here on the couch and I have a complete mental breakdown over nothing. My brain would just snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was really hard and it was suffocating. I told my husband the first couple times and we would kind of do our own little religious stuff. Um, he'd give me a blessing over and over and over. And by like the 15th time, I, he didn't mean to at all, but like he would look at me just kind of like, you want another one? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm holding this sweet little child and I don't know how to even like put my clothes on. I don't know how to, I mean, but I think I masked it really well. Yeah. And I, yes, like that well. day that we stopped, yeah, I would have never have known. My house was a complete disaster. I remember thinking she probably thinks I'm the biggest mess, oh, but I don't, I can't not. function. I can't even function enough to get my child fed and bathed and clean my house. And I know that's hard. That's part of being a mom sometimes when you just have so much to do. But it was way above that. Well above that. Like, anyways, waking up in the mornings and thinking that I might get through the day. But not knowing if I was going to be able to get out of bed. But I got out of bed every day. And the only reason I did is because of my oldest three. It was the only reason. And I, like I said, I hid it from my husband how severe it was. I would tell him I was struggling. And he would kind of work through it with me. But he had no idea no idea the severity of it um and months and months and months passed and it was so hard and with my um breast milk dipping and i think this is a lot of women when they have anxiety attacks it will dip and so every time i felt the anxiety attack i would worry so much about my breast milk because i was adamant i was going to nurse for 12 months at least with my twins i was only able to nurse for three months and it broke me and i don't know why because i would never look at any mom that didn't nurse and think any less of her. I don't know why, but I thought less of myself for some reason. And so um, that's what was really, really hard too because I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't exercise because I was afraid of my milk. Mm -hmm. And that I think really triggered because I was exercising so much when I was pregnant yeah, in a good healthy stopped. way, yeah. but I wasn't getting those endorphins that I was used to. And my dopamine and my serotonin levels and my brain weren't good. My eating was pretty good, but not the best. Um, now looking back, I just wish I would have ate better, like high omega, high omega diet and made sure my supplements were good. But by about six months, um, I started seeking help. I went to a foot zoner. She would tell me the vitamins I was deficient in, like what I needed to supplement. Um, I went to one of Sunny's well child tech checkups and I love her physician. And I just said to him, I'm, I'm feeling 
anxiety. Like, I feel like my heart races and I don't know if it's like an anxiety attack or what it really is. And he's like, oh, honey, you're, you're going through postpartum. And I felt like I just got diagnosed with cancer. You were like, don't say that. Yeah. Like, what? Like, there is no way. I'm, s what? <laughs> and I don't know why. And that's another reason I want to do this because I, I, people need their, to have their back covered. Like, because they shouldn't feel that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me if I wanted to put on an antidepressant. And I'm not against anti antidepressants at all. Like, I think there's a huge need for them in a lot of people. Um, I just knew I was nursing and I didn't want to stop. And so he said, okay, let's put you on a list a little whiff. There are certain things that you can take. I said, okay. So I got on that. And I think by the time, by the end of the day between taking that, which I only took one a day, um, and taking all of my supplements, my herbs, everything that I needed from everyone that I spoke to, um, I was taking like 42 pills a day, oh, geez. which was great. I mean, it did balance me. It helped me get through my day. It did not take it away. It was not gone, but it helped me keep my head above water. But um, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And if you don't have a support group, it's even harder. And there's just so many women out there. You hear these women that go and they hurt their children and people say bad things about them. They are not in their right state of mind. That's postpartum psychosis. I was not there. I did have one moment where I remember driving home from work one day and I was by myself. And I thought, if you drive off the road hard enough and fast enough into the, one of those concrete pillars, this is going to be over. My kids will be fine. They have great grandparents. They have a great dad. They'll be okay. And then something hit me aside the head. I don't know. I thought, what am I thinking? I can't do this. I can't. I can't, my kids cannot be about their mom. And that's when I knew I had to pull myself out. And I'm so grateful that I was able to do that because so, so many women are so far in, they can't. Um, but that's when I made sure I was taking everything I needed to. I started going for walks. I started meditation. Um, everything I could. But like I said, I didn't exercise heavily. I wish I would have allowed myself to a little bit more. Um, get back into my normal life, but I was so afraid of my milk supply, and um, I think a lot of women are like that. Some women can go hard all the time and not have to worry about it, but I'm not one of those women. So um, I used a lot of oils. I made sure I used my supplements and prayed a lot, a lot. So what made you, at six months, you said you finally reached out to get help. What what like pushed you to do that? I honestly, it wasn't even anything. I just mentioned it to him. And I don't even know if it was quite six months. It might have been sooner. Mm -hmm. But I just said to him, you know, like, because I think he looked at me and said, how he could, like, are you doing? It? Yeah. And is this your doctor? Um, your it was, well, it's our family doctor. Okay. So like, yeah. So, and I just like, you know, I'm just having like this nervousness and I'm getting it when I, like, the kids aren't stressing me out. They aren't, um, like, doing anything to cause this. And he's like, oh, honey, you're just going through postpartum. It's okay. I'm like, okay. What? <laughs> Did that like, ever cross your mind? Like, is this, is this postpartum depression? I don't, I don't know if it did before then. But it sure triggered. Like, of course it is. Like, yeah. once I got home and really decided to drop my pride because... Why would I don't want to admit anything is wrong with me right. when I love to help everyone else, but why can't I just let someone help me? My mom didn't even know. I um, didn't even know when Jesse like talked to me about it the first time. I was like, What? Jesse, you've listened to me so many times. Like, you know, you know, you know but it's I would hard. Understand, it's hard but... to admit because then almost you don't want people to like constantly be bothering you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the more I thought about it, and mine wasn't as much depression. The anxiety led to depression. Yeah, okay. It wasn't the depression in, like, at first. And that's what a lot of women go through. But um, my anxiety was so bad that I would wake up in the morning and just lay there and think, okay, am I feeling it? Like, like waiting for it to am come I on. good? Yeah. Or is this going to be a bad day? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I went one day without any of it, but I would go through really good days, and then I would have a really bad day. And... Um, the worst day I think I was in public, because I usually could calm myself and try to keep my mind busy mm -hmm. in public. 
Um, I went to the salon with all four of my kids, which was kind of normal because I, I don't know, I always felt bad getting a babysitter so I could go pamper myself, which now I've totally do it now. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like you need uh, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> my boys all like sat on the chair. They were being so quiet, eating their little lunch. I took them. My baby was sitting on my lap. I was just getting a hair. Oh, I was getting my hair bleached. Anyway, so it did take a little while, but um, my baby was sitting on my lap. She was doing great. And all of a sudden my hair starts to show up my neck and I'm like, no, like I can't handle it in here. And this was in our small little town. <laughs> the busiest week of the year, the week before the county fair, Mm -hmm. and everyone was in the salon. And our little town, one thing happens and the story gets blown up. And I don't even live in the town, I just go there to get my hair done. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I remember thinking, okay, this can't happen here. It can't happen here because everyone's gonna say different stories and no one's gonna have a clue what's going on. So I, I just said to my niece that was doing my hair, I said, I'm going to have an anxiety attack. It's coming on right now. I probably have 15 minutes before it's bad. And she's like, what? And I said to Brady, one of my boys, I said, go out and get my box of oils right now because I need to calm it. And so he went and got it. I doused myself and it would calm him, but it wouldn't completely take it away. And um, I just started sobbing. And I said, Caitlin, I'm okay. You don't need to say anything. But like tears were just flowing and flowing and flowing. Mm -hmm. So I called my mom and I like, please come get the kids. So she, by the time she got there, I was basically at mel- melting point. And I put the kids in her car and had a complete meltdown in my mom's car. I felt like a two-year-old that I needed my mommy to hold me. Mm-hmm. And I just said, mom, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna die. I don't know how to live anymore. And she, at that point, knew nothing. She had no idea. And she's like, it's okay. Like She just held me. I'm her baby. And she took my kids, and I went back in, and finished my hair, and came back out, and Caitlin, my niece, just said, I had no idea. Like, what just, what just happened? Yeah. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's over. And then I went home and slept for six hours because it wiped you out. Yeah. It's just so hard, and it's not even postpartum, but I want people to be aware of mental illness. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm... I would say I'm cured now. I, I don't feel like I have any repercussions anymore, but some women don't. They, it sends them into this deepness that they can't get through, and then they just kind of maintain that the rest of their lives. It doesn't always go away. Um, so that's another reason I just think that women need so much help. And I'm not saying just women. I mean, men do deal with mental illness as well, but we have a lot more hormone fluctuations and everything that cause it, I think, um, compared to a man. But one in four women in North America suffer from postpartum depression, full blown postpartum depression. And only I think a fifth of that fourth seek help. Wow. I mean, think about um, all of the moms that you know. Yeah. One in four, how many of those moms have talked to any of us about it? Yeah. Well, that's how we are I think as women is we, we are so readily able to give help and give help and ask people what they need and what they need from us but when it comes to taking and receiving help it's so difficult and it's not until you're in those moments that you are like oh my gosh I need help but then is that mom guilt that comes on you and it's like you can't ask for it I've I've had this conversation with so many women in the past couple weeks about you know we're taught to be self-reliant taught to be independent strong women and then when we actually need help, we can't ask for it. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. And I think that's what's so sad is why can't we ask for it? Mm -hmm. And I think, to me, I thought, well, I can't call Kaylee because Kaylee's busy with Kaylee's stuff, with family stuff. Like, she's as busy as I am. So why add one more thing to her plate or this friend over here or this friend? I did have a couple friends at work that I remember walking into work one day and everything was fine. I was just trying to be happy. And we were able to take like a 10 minute break to hurry and grab some breakfast. And we walked behind a closed door and I just broke down. And they're like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. And they're like, you were just fine. I'm like, no, I wasn't. <laughs> we're like, gonna I was it. pretending <laughs> like I should be an actress. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> but anyways, but um, all of us are. I think all of us want to hide everything and make, sure, make the, everything so perfect. But life is not perfect. Life isn't meant to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But 
like I said, we are so giving of ourselves. And that's another thing my husband said. I think you need to stop nursing. I think it is sucking the life out of you, literally. Yeah. And instead of thinking that as a loving comment, I was so mad at him. So mad at him because I thought, I am doing this for her. Like, and now looking back when I'm normal, like I'm sane, yeah. I'm like, that was a loving comment. He was really just trying to help. And men just want to fix it. They don't. Yeah. And that's kind of like when my doctor offered me an antidepressant, I thought, you just want to fix it. You yeah. don't want to fix the actual reason of what's wrong with me. <laughs> and he really wasn't. He was really trying to help. And that's another thing that's really hard. You get mad. Like yeah. so mad. Like you're not trying to help me. But... And I think it's hard because it's such an imbalance in your body mm-hmm. and it's hard to recognize and it's like sneak up on you. Like yeah. your fourth pri- your fourth baby. Yeah. Never had it before. Never had depression and I mm. like I didn't I like the fact that you pointed out that it doesn't always start right after you have the yeah. baby. Yeah, that's like I, I think, think that's, that's a, really a huge point. misconception. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge. And I think our bodies there's certain levels and we could get so deep into this, but there's certain levels of hormones that we have and they can hold and maintain for so long and then just deplete. And you are giving that baby, nursing moms are giving those even more than a mom that's like formula feeding. They can have postpartum just as easily. It's just a different way. It's a different way that all the fluctuations and everything are happening. And it's not something that you need to be embarrassed about. It's not something that you need to feel um, so taboo. I don't know. The word taboo is just so huge in my head because there's just so many things we need to talk about nowadays that it's it's should it should be out in the open. Yeah. yeah. Like Jess is having a bad day. I think that like people who haven't maybe ever gone through some of those emotions feel like it's self-induced. Like mm-hmm. she's stressing herself out. Well, she should mm-hmm. be depressed. She has four kids. What's she thinking? Like yeah. people who haven't gone through those kind of scenarios or emotions or know somebody like that don't understand that mental illness is a it's as real as cancer Mm -hmm. um one of the apostles i think it was uchtdorf or -hmm. or, no it was holland he gave a really good talk about if somebody had cancer you wouldn't make fun of them just as you shouldn't make somebody fun of somebody who has depression because it is a real thing and clinically they need help like you wouldn't tease someone with leukemia so why would you not have empathy for someone who has depression Mm -hmm. and if you have depression, you know, seek it as you would chemotherapy and all the other proper yes. steps. And that really brought, cause I'm kind of like tough love, but like Jackson. And I was too. And I think that's why it was so hard. Yeah. Cause you're like, what is, I remember Jackson said he was having an anxiety attack one time and I was like, what the hell? You're fine. Like just breathe <laughs> it out. Like we're going to be you're fine. Good. You know, like what? I do some downward dog and be all right. <laughs> I was like, do you want to go have sex? Are you okay? Like what's wrong here? You know, a guy, what? And then when we sat down and talked about it, I realized I'm like, he just felt so overwhelmed and I should never have robbed him yeah, just because I it. don't know what that felt like mm-hmm. to him at that moment. But I think that that is so important. Even if you don't get it, you just have to like be supportive and be there and love them, I guess is the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a thing. And now I think about it, um, like just the little things for moms. I, I think people are so worried about moms as soon as they have that baby. They're yeah. so worried about them for the first few weeks. And then it's just kind of like, oh, you're yeah. good. You're back on track. Like you're fine. It's like cold cut turkey. You're just yeah. Like, yeah. But, but I also think a lot of moms want to seem that way too. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like I got it together. together. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. okay that I have all these kids. And it's fine. I know. I got it. <laughs> Can't take a bath or wash your hair. I, I got it. I'm good. I don't remember I know, my name. And I don't know why we do that. Yeah. Like, I think I'm Jackson's mom. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my child. I remember Sunny was born on a Saturday. We went home on a Monday morning. And Tuesday morning, I took all the kids to school, made them lunch. My husband went back to work. Mm-hmm. This is my fourth baby. I got this. Yeah. Like, I'm fine. But that's like, when you need the most help, I well, feel like. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think you need help because you need to, you need to, a lot of people that have, like, the anesthesia, they need to have rest to get that out of their body. Mm-hmm. You don't realize anesthesia can lay in your body for like a week or two. That's what's wrong with me. <laughs> it's still there. That's why you don't take the drugs. <laughs> but another point to make is I think once all that snowball and the endorphins that the mom still has from all, like having the baby and that high you get from that newborn that just wants to cuddle you every second of the day, mm-hmm. um, I think at three or four months, you need help again. Yeah. You yeah. need meals then. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a Mormon thing, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it is a huge Mormon thing to make sure that the mom, 
everyone has meals for like two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the moms don't have to worry about making food. But, you know, I had a, my next door neighbor when I had the twins. She showed up at my door when the twins were probably three weeks old with two huge bags of pancakes. Oh. She had made them put a piece of wax paper. I've been meaning to do a video on this because this is what I love to do now. Put a piece of wax paper in between every, all of these little pancakes and put them in freezer bags and had frozen them and brought them over. That's so and nice. she said, I know Jackson's probably busy, my oldest, because he was, like I said, just barely two. And she said, just pop these in the, in the toaster in the morning and let him eat them, or at night or for lunch. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things that I'm just like, that was awesome. Yeah. Thank like, you you're so amazing. Much. Like, why didn't I think of that, doing it for myself? And then I thought, let her do it. Yeah. She yeah. wants to do that. And I think it's, I think we just need to help a sister out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. We all need a little more help. Yeah. And I think like you're, I always feel like I don't want to ask for help because I'm like, I don't want to put them out. I don't want to bug mm -hmm. them. That's annoying. Like they have their own stuff going on. Like, uh, but I feel like really that's robbing somebody of giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. to maybe like, that's what my best friend, Christina, she would do anything for you at any time that mm -hmm. I could call her and be like, you know, she, you know, drop with that. Mm -hmm. And I realized I've, I've now let her help me because I realize that it makes her happy. And that yeah. sounds like, does that sound selfish? Yeah. I let her help me. <laughs> but I realize that that fills her love jar. Like that makes her feel like she's needed and wanted. And, yeah. and sometimes I think if we don't reach out to people and they don't get that opportunity to help us, that maybe that offends them. Yeah. You know, they want to help and love and support you. And yeah. when we're like, no, it's fine. We're kind of robbing them of the opportunity to help us and love us and serve well, us. Even like in Jesse's case, it broke my heart when Jesse finally opened up to me because I was like, I would have dropped everything. I know. And been there, like, no matter what. Yeah. So you should always, like, like find like, that person really that will understand. Doing? Right. Like, and reach out. And I think that's yeah. what's hard, too, is we feel guilty for making our, our sisters and our friends drop everything for us. Yeah. yeah. But it's like we wouldn't feel bad if they called us. Right. No, ever. Like yeah. never. I feel we worse need to if remember you didn't that. Because I'm like, did I do something? Did, did I, I not to something? want to call me? Yeah. 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 Well, that's what how I was. I was like, why didn't I see this? Like. Yeah, but honestly, like, how often do we actually physically yeah. see each other? Mm -hmm. And like my mom, she saw me all the time, and I would hide it like a dog with a bone. Like, yeah. there was nothing I could. Like, I would try everything I could just to be normal. And as long as I was normal, and somehow. Being the youngest of six kids, I'm kind of the one that has to keep everyone together. <laughs> like, I'm the one that has to just, it's like, rip everyone to, like, every, keep everyone together. And so that was another thing. I'm just like, I don't want my siblings to know. Mm -hmm. Because my siblings, I'm, like, again, I'm the baby. And they, even though I'm 33 years old, I'm still their baby sister. Mm -hmm. And so if they know something's wrong, yeah. then they are just right on me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They would help me with anything. And so I'm like, no, I don't want to bother them either. But at the time, you don't even think about asking for help. You're, at least for me, I was so deep in that hole. And that's the only way I can describe it is a deep, dark mm -hmm. hole that I couldn't ask for help. I just had to get my stuff done because me doing my own stuff each and every day is the only thing that kept me going. Yeah. Like I know women that to the point where they can't even function. They can't get their kids to school. They can't make dinner. They can't do anything. But that, if I kept myself busy, that's how I stayed afloat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that makes and sense. luckily I didn't get any worse because I wouldn't have been able to do what I did. But yeah, it, it is hard. <laughs> so hard. So what advice do you have now looking back? Like if you were to redo or, you know, do something different, what would you do? Or what advice would you give to other moms that might be feeling the same way? I just think there's three or four things you have to do. Um, you have to get exercise, whether it be walking around the block. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, when I say exercise, I think a lot of people jump immediately to having a hot body. Yeah. I don't mean that. Mm -hmm. I, when I am, ha when I've had a baby and I am nursing and I'm postpartum for a year, I am trying really, and I've, I learned this by the fourth baby, to have a lot more self-love mm -hmm. and realize I got this body because God let me have four kids, mm -hmm. not because I'm a little chubbier than I was the day I got married. It has nothing to do with that. So I think when, I don't want people to mistake me saying, you need to go sweat your guts out. I think exercise and being outside and seeing the sun yeah. is a big deal. I think you need nutrition. You need a diet high in omega fatty acids. That's something I've learned huge in every research study I've read, 
everything that you look up says omegas, omegas, omega, omegas, um, amino acids. Um, I would go to a foot zoner every two to three weeks and she would tweak my amino acids and say, okay, you need a little bit more. You need so much more vitamin D3. Um, I was taking a crazy high amount of vitamin D3. Um, that makes had, sense. So, cause when I was breastfeeding, my doctor was saying, you know, when babies are breastfed, they mm-hmm. might not get as much vitamin D. So I had to buy like droplets for Elliot. Yeah. But, it, and they get what you have, but then you don't get what they take. Right. right. So I was taking my doTERRA vitamins, which I'll do a video in one day. Um, I was also taking, which the doTERRA vitamins have 1600 milligrams, um, which is a high dose. Yeah. And, but you cannot get all your nutrition in food. You have to take a multivitamin of some kind. Try to make sure it's a good one. Um, and you need sleep. Sleep's a big deal. Um, at least three to four hour increments when you have a newborn baby is a big deal. Um, if not six or seven. But sometimes you have to have help. You have to let someone come over and hold your baby while you go put on a night mask and earplugs and go to sleep. Yeah. Um, that really, I think, is a big trigger for a lot of women, is sleep too. Yeah. Um, but nutrition, exercise, and sleep, the essentials of life. Mm-hmm. Do you also think, like, I, I love that you brought up the exercise part and that it's not like you got to go back to the gym and lift for 45 and run mm-hmm. for an hour and then take your pro. It's, yeah. I think it's actually more of the thought of you just going to take that 20 minutes just for yourself mm-hmm. to be for yourself. I think as a new mom, you don't want to... You don't want to take time away from you because you have this beautiful baby and you want to be this family. And the thought of you like taking time for yourself makes you feel selfish. But we need to remember that we still are human beings and we need to listen and have some time for ourselves in the day. Like this morning, I wanted to get up and just do this quick little 30 minute workout. And Jackson's like, don't, because if you wake up, then I can't sleep. And and then I just have to lay here and I was like, oh, rough. I go, honey, you don't understand. This is the only 30 minutes mm-hmm. I get today that I just get to have for myself. Yeah. That I just need that for it's myself. It's just your zone. Yeah. And just it completely. Might, wasn't even like the hardest workout, but I just, 30 minutes to think about and pay attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. And it goes and a long way. And it's a big way. deal. And one thing I forgot. Okay. So exercise, nutrition, sleep, and meditation. Oh, yes. Meditation is huge. And I never really got it until probably the last five or six years. I started doing yoga and I loved it. And it doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have to be Pilates or something that's a a little more low-key exercise. It really can be sitting in your room for three minutes Mm -hmm. and taking three minutes of silence, no thinking for mom, or just making a list and sitting down and just meditating, making a list of what you have to do so you can just align your mind. Because if you don't align your mind, nothing else is going to work. And I, like I said, you have to be a little selfish in order to be the best mom, wife, sister, daughter you can be. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to not be any of those things so that you can be the best of all those things. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's just so many things you can do. And make, having a new mom saying, let's go for a walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, what meal can I bring you? Saying, what meal can I put in your freezer? And then do you have 30 minutes after so we can take the baby in the stroller and go get some sunshine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's... That's a good point. Yeah. And just trying to get back to normal life instead of sitting in the house huddled for so long. It's really hard for moms I know that have like a winter baby. Yeah. Like Sunny was a winter baby. Well, she was an October baby. So it was a little harder because I, I mean, you kind of go dormant for a while mm-hmm. and you don't want all the sickness around and, but you've got to stay, you've got to stay in your normal life too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's got to be balance. So, Amen. yeah. And ask for help. Don't be yeah. afraid. It's not, it's not a bad thing to ask for shameful. help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, I that's my two cents. You. Thank you I'm for sharing you. that with us. Yeah, you. So amazing for sharing. So many and people need to hear that. They do. So many. And um, I don't know if you care for me to mention it, but I think we're going to put together a postpartum depression awareness event this mm-hmm. summer. And I hope I get these ladies with me. Yes. And we're going to have all those things that I spoke about um, involved in the Day of Women. And there's going to be exercise. There's going to be meditation. There's going to be education. There's going to be just women. And we're all going to come together, all shapes, sizes, ages, everything. And it's going to be really, really fun. We have a lot of fun people coming to teach. And it's going to be awesome. 
We'll and remind we'll you about it yeah. when it gets closer. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep you posted. And I'm telling I will you, keep this you one. Too. She's in bed. Okay. I'll be thinking of everyone else. So, yeah. So, if you want any more tips, um, you can join me on. Um, I do a lot on Instagram. Um, I don't have a Twitter. That's I'm okay. Sorry. I don't, <laughs> That's I don't okay. even know how to work it. to keep up with. Um, I do have a Facebook group. Um, if you want to be added, just give me a message and I'll add you to it. Um, other than that, I have a lot of nutrition tips coming and a lot of videos coming and they're coming out on my channel. Um, I would love you guys to follow me if you don't already. We'll leave all the links down below, so be yes. sure to check her out. I'm yes. super excited that you're doing all this. Yes. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. Anytime. Come back. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for watching today, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.